Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and, you know, this is not my monthly Linux Cope video, okay? In reality, ladies and gentlemen, long story short, Windows is dying, okay? You know, October 14, 2025, if you don't update from Windows 10 to 11, uh, you might not get those fancy security updates. Now, you know, a couple weeks ago, I kind of, uh, you know, showcased uh, how to install that juicy Arch Linux, you know, the really complicated elitist version of Linux that people on Reddit or the internet can't stop saying that they use, okay? And I'm proud enough to say that I've stopped using it for mental health reasons. Now, one of the things on my channel is like, I don't want to sit here and just like gas up Linux and say, oh, it's the greatest thing. It's got problems, okay? One of those problems is the user error sometimes. Now, I was updating my Linux installation, and unfortunately, after I would say two years of having this safely installed onto my system, Arch Linux, and just minding its own business, I broke the installation, okay? There was one update that came in, and literally, it just froze my entire system up. Now, normally, if your system freezes up during an edit, okay, you know, black screen and everything, you might shit yourself. Most modern operating systems, like Windows, for instance, will probably roll back and recover things and probably get you back to a computer just fine. Systems like Mac OS are so baby-proof that you could probably delete everything important and still somehow get a functioning system back. It truly is the Fisher price of computers. Linux is a lot different, okay? If you want to bla if you want to blow up everything important on your system directory all in one fucking command, you can, all right? Linux literally hands you a sidearm and says, "If you want to blow the brains out of your computer, we won't stop you." And you can. Now, of course, there's plenty of versions of Linux that basically are like playing Russian roulette. There is, uh, you know, S-word Linux, okay, for the uh, safety of YouTube's TOS. I'm not going to say it, but basically if you enter the wrong command on this version of Linux, ooh, <laughs> it blows its brains out quite literally. <laughs> now, of course, if you love living life on the edge, I, I may recommend this, okay? But I was a user of Arch Linux, and unfortunately in the middle of an update it crashed, and lo and behold, I basically was staring at a black screen at 2 in the morning. Now, normally I'm not freaking out if I lose my computer because most of my work happens on external drives, okay? Here's a fucking pro tip for people that don't want to pull their hair out when things go wrong. Work and keep all your important stuff on external drives, okay? Because if your computer takes a fat dumpy, at least you won't be completely out of commission, right? That's probably the best advice of the day that I can give you. <laughs> but of course, beyond all of it, I actually lost my system. And uh, I had a recovery system called TimeShift, which for anybody that doesn't know, uh, basically when you're using uh, Linux, right, if it's formatted a certain way, you'll be allowed to go into the past, for instance, and effectively just load a state, right? So for instance, every single you know thing you're seeing right over here is a version of Linux that has been autosaved, okay? So like an autosave in a video game, all right? Usually it'll happen like, you know, maybe every hour. In this situation, if you look at the dates, it happens about every other day, if not, you know, every day. So basically, if my system stops working on, say, the 13th, but I know that it worked on, say, the 7th, I can click on this, hit that fat restore button, and it will take literally seconds for the system to reshift, readjust, and basically get me back up and running, which is one of the reasons why when Linux fails, I'm not necessarily worried. Unfortunately, my version of Arch Linux had this corrupted entirely, and it just didn't actually fucking restore. So at this moment in time, I decided to do the one thing that uh, I probably should have done a long time ago. <laughs> stop making things fucking difficult for myself. So I decided to stop using Arch Linux. Now this is not a video where I'm going to make a negative Arch Linux video. I think it's great. I think a lot of people experimenting and using it is awesome. I've made plenty of videos showcasing people how to use it. But I decided to make the switch just because I noticed a lot of comments in my videos about Linux. Muda, I will never use the Penguin if I have to open up the terminal. For anybody that doesn't know what the, the fucking terminal is, uh, this is one of the scariest nightmares that anybody who's thinking of switching to Linux actually wants to do. This screen right over here makes it look like you're back in 1991, okay? When computers had you literally typing in exact commands to navigate around and basically see what's on your system. 
Now, of course, if a lot of people think this is confusing or annoying, I get it, okay? You're somebody that just wants to use their computer. You're not used to terminals and old 90s methods of navigating your computer, and you probably don't want to learn, okay? Dude, you, you already have way too much shit in your real life to worry about. Why would you come home to learn something this confusing? So I decided, obviously, I wanted to take this chance and switch off to a different operating system underneath the Linux umbrella and kind of see if there was not a better option. Now, I've promoted Linux Mint in the past, and actually, the big catalyst was this, was uh, actually PewDiePie's video where he actually did use this on his main system. So I figured, you know, I've promoted this in the past. I've talked about how cool it is. What if I considered switching to it and seeing if this addresses a lot of the problems that many people have? See, a lot of users that talk about Windows, actually, you know, at least in my comments, they don't actually like it, all right? They don't want to be using Windows, but they want to upgrade to it because that's literally all they know, and they don't know if there's any other options. But to guide you through Linux Mint, the option is there. Now, when it comes to using this on a day-to-day -day basis, if all you do is browse the web on your computer, watch some movies, write some documents, and basically do a little bit of graphic design, then I would say the option for at least these three blocks is there. Graphic design, a lot of software is still exclusive to Windows and Mac, so I would never in a million years recommend you switch over to Linux if this is primarily where you want to work and you're already established in something that's a professional suite that's not available here, okay? Your mileage may seriously fucking vary. Now, when it comes to things like gaming, for instance, even that works exceptionally well. But let me guide you through the process. Getting Linux Mint, basically copying it to an actual flash drive as you would a installation for Windows, had me taken exactly a few minutes, didn't have to modify or do anything crazy. Installation literally took faster than Windows. A couple of prompts, you know, me entering in my usernames, my basic locales, things that I would normally be doing in every other system took, again, minutes. After that, the system basically installed, and I was actually pretty shocked to see that everything worked out of the box. So, meaning my graphics card worked out of the box, my system worked out of the box, everything even updated before the installation actually completed, which I quite enjoyed. And, uh, you know, aside from all of that, it just worked out of the box completely well. Now, when it came to my graphics card, a lot of the actual graphics card stuff worked pretty much based on like open source drivers, but it took literally seconds for me to get the more updated version of NVIDIA drivers. And again, this is primarily for NVIDIA. If you have AMD GPUs, congratulations, everything's just baked in and you don't even have to worry about updating the drivers there. Isn't that fucking convenient? But realistically, the community was so awesome that it took me one Google search to get to this URL, where apparently there was a PPA, which is a repository of updated graphic drivers. So to show you how easy it was to get this installed, and you only had to do this one time, I go to this Linux Mint start button right here. I'm just gonna call it the start button because that's how I've been conditioned as a human being to fucking call it. You type in the words software sources, you get this little admin prompt, you authenticate, and ladies and gentlemen, you go to that PPA option, you go to add, and of course, all you gotta do is highlight this, right click, copy, and boom, <laughs> slap that shit in there and hit okay. And once all of that is done in kosher, you go back to the start menu, go to the driver manager, and ladies and gentlemen, at this moment in time, you just pick which version of the NVIDIA driver that you wanted. And of course, I picked the most recent open version of that driver, and all of this happened literally within minutes. I mean, it's crazy to see just how well and how efficient and how quick it was to get this up and going. Now, of course, when it came to a lot of the software that I was using, obviously using the software manager, ladies and gentlemen, I was able to open up a quick app store and basically type in words like Discord. And I was able to install Discord right here, out of the box. No extra setup at all. Ladies and gentlemen, what about Steam, for instance? Right there, boom, you just go here, you click that little install option, it says launch for me, and boom, things just work out of the box. And if you want any other type of launcher, well, there are actual third-party tools like Lutris, which again, allowed me to also install this and use other launchers. Like if I needed to use GOG or fucking heaven forbid Ubisoft launcher, boom, the options are there. 
So yeah, it was actually surprisingly that easy and up and running. Now, of course, updating the system literally takes no time. There's an update manager, which looks just like this. And again, the beauty of updating Linux operating systems over Windows operating systems is no matter how intense the update can be, no matter how deep into your system you go, all you have to do is tap that install option, you give it your password if needed, and then boom, it just does it all the way in the background for you. Now, even if you're updating the fucking kernel itself, you know, no operating system is going to come up and say, hold on, pal, here's a big old black screen. You're gonna have to wait until we're done. No, if you actually have something seriously important, it'll just tell you, restart your computer once and you're good to go. Now, one of the things that I found so fucking impressive about this system was that everything came out of the box and it just worked. One of my biggest issues with Linux has always been putting my computer into sleep mode, which before all of this, it usually was just awake the entire time. Out of the box, I was able to suspend, put my system into those sleep states. It had every single driver installed out of the box, like Bluetooth, for instance, so I could instantly connect my PlayStation controller and use it right there on my system. I could connect anything I wanted and it just worked out of the box. Now, I've seen a lot of people talk about, I'm just waiting for Valve to release their SteamOS that's currently available exclusively on the Steam Deck. And I would say, you don't have to wait for anything, boys. You're, the world is your oyster. Let Uncle Muda guide you through how to get things fucking hacked together on your system. If you go to Valve's website, you can actually build your own Steam machine. Now, this is a Steam machine. Remember back in the day when Valve actually released pre-built gaming computers with, like, Alienware and shit? Yeah, this was a far older version of Linux, okay? You can actually read it just by the fucking hardware requirements. Four gigabytes of RAM or more. Hard drive, only 200 gigs. You know, it's crazy when, like, one game alone probably eats up nearly all of that minimum requirement right there. But you see this yellow strip? This image is not compatible with Steam Deck. If you're looking for the recovery image for the deck, visit this link. And that link takes you to the SteamOS recovery menu, where you can, in fact, download the original SteamOS image and hack it together onto an actual computer. Now, would I recommend you do that? Probably not. This image is designed specifically for this set of hardware. No, in reality, there's an, another amazing option that I've shown you before called Bazite, which again, runs on Fedora Linux. And of course, all of this has even more functionality on top of it, where they provide you a lot of these games working right out of the box, and they work absolutely well. In fact, it's so good that I have this installed on my Legion Go and my computer downstairs, where I actually use it as a straight up Muda console system, okay? Instead of having a PlayStation 5, I just literally have a console with Steam functionality that literally just has all my games running out of the box. And with cloud saving, it doesn't matter. I could play in front of this computer, I could play on this, I could play in my computer downstairs. With cloud syncing, obviously all of those files will be shared with each applicable system. Which again, is all entirely done with a lot of free, cool open source software like SyncThing, or built directly into shit like Steam, or really most gaming launchers on the PC without paying a dime. Now, one of the coolest things that I saw about like Linux gaming guys was apparently a couple weeks ago, people had started to emulate ray tracing into actual Linux games, or not Linux games, but just the Linux gaming stack. So for instance, remember that Indiana Jones game that came out with the actual ray tracing being baked into the system requirements? Because it uses ray tracing as an actual like, you know, feature of its game design. So of course, one of the things that I saw was if you had an older GPU or again, I guess even older Nvidia cards that don't have ray tracing, there are emulated ray tracing options that are completely available. And lo and behold, at around 50 frames per second, we are in fact emulating ray tracing on a card that is not capable of ray tracing, all right? So 40 to 60 frames per second, obviously not perfect, but things do work. So if you have a super old legacy computer that isn't supported by Windows 11 anymore, things like Linux Mint and a lot of actual, you know, enhancements by the open source community have kind of allowed you to keep old hardware or in some case, even recent hardware pretty alive and active. 
Now beyond all of it, ladies and gentlemen, the interesting part about this system was, again, how easy it was to effectively get going. Again, I have been playing around with this for a few weeks now at this point, and I've switched over to the entirety of Linux Mint. And one of the beautiful aspects of it too, and one of the reasons why I made this video in the end was again, if I could use this system for basically an entire month at this point without ever opening up that super scary dreaded console, um, it's really not like something that I can't ultimately recommend. A lot of people had complaints about using Linux and saying that it was overly complicated. Or, you know, they'll always reference memes where it takes like an entire programmer to install things like a web browser. But I really think the excuse that it's just too hard now is actually null and void. Because ultimately, compared to Windows or even Mac, I would say that the Linux Mint option, and this isn't the only option in town, Bazite is that great option too that I showed as another competitor to this. There's also Hannah Montana OS, there's Among Us OS, and for those of you who don't care about being spied on, there's also Red Star OS. Do not recommend you install that one. Should probably mention that for legal reasons, but there's a lot of great options, and I just really wanted to show you how Linux Mint works. So out of an entire error on my part, and my system effectively crashing, this is a stable, secure version that works pretty much out of the box for most people. And again, the reason why I ultimately did switch to this was I don't want to go through the stress and hassle of reinstalling an operating system ever again. So in this situation, I did go down with Linux Mint, and basically for my month usage of it, it has been absolutely exceptional. And I don't know why anybody wouldn't consider switching to this, especially since Windows is adding a lot of shit that people are genuinely complaining about. You know, for the first time, there's actually serious competition in the mix too. And if you want a system where you can play a video game out of the box at its maximum settings with features like ray tracing or frame generation even, this is a great option. Now obviously, yes, there are games that don't work out of the box, primarily games with strict anti-cheats, so if you're looking to play Rainbow Six Siege, looking to play Call of Duty, it's probably still worth sticking around with Windows. And in that case, if you want to be using Windows or Windows 11, there are great tools like Rufus that allow you to download a copy of Windows 11's ISO file and modify it to the point where you can actually use it on unsupported hardware for now. But like I said, there's a lot of stuff that Microsoft is doing where they're just kind of twisting the knife ever so slowly to make the entire process more annoying. But for now, I highly recommend if anybody wants to switch over to Linux Mint, if you're ever so scared of that terminal or things being overly complicated, this system, ladies and gentlemen, out of the box, is probably the most feature complete, the most comparative product to anything big, uh, you know, corporations are putting out there. And it's all thanks to a fucking wildly amazing open source community and a group of people that are, again, willing to keep options available on the table. So yeah, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out.